Hello, everyone. Today on the final bar, we do our normal Monday routine, hitting the market from three directions, top-down macro analysis, sector rotation, bottom-up stock picking. We're going to hit on as many key charts as we can in each of those buckets as the S&P accelerating further to the upside into the close, closing above 3,900 for the first time. Every measure we've been looking at through last week was about risk on over risk off, and that trend continuing today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the final bar. Hey, everyone. Welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller, Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a snowy Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we break down the action in the markets through the charts, focusing on the message the markets themselves can provide. And, you know, as we debate all the headwinds and tailwinds, all the news headlines, all the expectations about what could drive certain assets uh, you know, higher or lower at some point in the future. At the end of the day, the best thing I would argue you can do as an investor is focus on what the markets are doing. Uh, do less should investing and focus more on what actually is happening. Price tells you where the market is headed uh, because it's a measurement of where buyers and sellers are coming together in any asset class, right? regardless of, uh, of how they're uh, what the particular nuances in place. And most assets we are going to look at are driven by supply and demand, by fear and greed, and uh, the price can tell us uh, what's at it. You know, as we talked about last week, it's all about risk on versus off. And two weeks ago, you had this, you know, weakness going into the end of, uh, of uh, two weeks ago, certainly felt like the potential for much deeper downside. And then last week was all about a recovery, strong earnings, the market moving higher today in acceleration to the upside from 2 p.m. on Eastern. It was pretty much, uh, you know, higher and higher. And so overall energy leading the way. But most things in pretty good shape. We're going to look at all as many charts as we can. We have some really good guests coming through this show uh, regularly. I was super excited with uh, with the guests we had last week. I had some really good conversations with them. This week, more of the same. Tomorrow on Tuesday the 9th, we have Javed Mirza. Javed's the chief uh, technical analyst at Canaccord Genuity in Toronto. On Wednesday, we have Clint Cowles from TD Ameritrade in Minneapolis. And then on Thursday, Larry Tantarelli from Blue Chip Daily. So three great analysts. And, and again, I'm, I'm excited to have conversations. We've had all of them on the show uh, before at least one time and, uh, and have had some really good discussions. So should be a lot of fun as we try to unpack the themes of the week and focus on the charts you should be focused on. Let's get to our market recap. As we're looking at the, the chart here, the little two bar preview or two day preview chart, you can see Friday sort of choppy action. We didn't finish toward the highs, but overall last week was certainly more risk on than risk off. But today, gapping higher and then really accelerating uh, into the close. So the S&P finishing about three quarters of a percent higher, just around 39.15. Mid caps up almost double that, actually a little over double that, uh, up 1.6%. Small caps up 2.8%. So if you're looking at the relative strength of small caps, which is one of our sort of main, you know, risk on versus risk off measures, uh, you know, certainly getting that vote of confidence uh, today. Interesting to note, the NASDAQ 100 essentially in line with the S&P, not really lagging, but certainly not uh, leading uh, the market higher. The VIX actually a bit uh, higher above 21 today. Looking at other asset classes, bond prices actually increased. And most of that came in the first couple hours of trading this morning. If you look at the TLT, which uh, closed up, uh, get, sort of gave half of it back. It closed up about 0.4%. Uh, percent. Ten-year yields back down around 116. Commodities across the board essentially higher with gold and, uh, and silver moving higher. Oil prices certainly moving higher with energy. The number one S&P sector up over 4% in the form of the XLE. So overall that bull trend in the DBC that we've been talking about recently, certainly continuing to uh, shine and move higher. Cryptocurrencies on the move. <laughs> I feel like that's a standard report for uh, for what's happening with cryptocurrencies, but Bitcoin accelerating to, uh, to the upside, uh, finishing up over 13%, uh, getting about 44,000 for the first time today. 
Let's look at some of the different charts. We'll focus on as many themes as we can as part of this big picture uh, overview. We start with the macro analysis. We'll then go to sectors. We'll finish up with stocks and, and try to hit on as many key charts as we can in each of those buckets. So when we look at a daily chart of the S&P, you know, going back to Charles Dow's writing from you know, 100 plus years ago, you know, his, his writings about market analysis basically define trends, right? An uptrend is a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And if you have any question about what the overall market is doing, take a step back and look at the highs and look at the lows. And what we've seen, you know, most recently, we had a new swing low for the S&P going, uh, you know, undercutting its mid-January uh, uh, low uh, the last week of, uh, of January. That was the week and a half ago pullback that we talked about. But from there, we've reverted higher and we've continued to make higher highs. And again, if you look at the high price, as long as every time we push higher, we keep going higher, right? And what I mean is every time we have a, a an impulse and a correction, an impulse and a correction. That's what the Elliott wave uh, sort of terminology is. You have a big impulse move in the direction of the trend, a corrective wave sort of against the trend, and then you keep going on. As long as the highs, those impulse moves keep getting higher, which is what we've seen now um, Friday into uh, today's trading, it tells you the uptrend is in place. And until that pattern breaks, the uptrend is certainly uh, engaged. And that's what we've seen. If and when we do pull back, we've got some clear support to pay attention to. The 50-day moving average around 37.50, the most recent swing low around 3,700. So those would be some logical places uh, to look uh, to look down to. But overall, uh, trend is in place until proven otherwise. What's worth maybe watching right now is if you look at the high from early January, the high from mid-January, and then this uh, you know new swing high today, sort of Friday into today. The RSI, the measure of momentum, has had successively lower uh, peaks in each one of those. Uh, now, again, bearish divergences for me are what put them on my radar. A breakdown in price is what actually confirms that you need to be concerned, and we've certainly not seen anything uh, like that uh, at the moment. So overall, big picture, things lining up pretty, pretty well. Let's look at some other asset classes here. Uh, just very briefly, we'll look at the candle glance page. You know, we talk about the bull market in commodities. The DBC is actually testing all-time highs. Uh, January 2020 uh, was around 16 and a quarter. We're really close. We're less than a dollar away from that. Uh, and, and again, the DBC is one measure of uh, of, of commodities. There, there are a lot of different ways depending on how you weight um, the different uh, the different uh, pieces. But you know, it's worth noting if you think about a measured move. You had the big move from the April low to the uh, late August, early September peak, you then had the pullback. Then we broke out of that uh, bull flag pattern, which is a parallel sort of downtrend channel that goes against this uh, uptrend. If you take that measurement, that flagpole and extend it from there, we're not far from the upside objective. I think when I measure that, it was around 1650, 1675, something like that, if I remember. It's so really, really close. So approaching all time highs and actually meeting the minimum objective based on this midway uh, pattern. It actually may be an interesting time to uh, think about if, uh, if if commodities have enough to continue to push above these long-term highs. We're actually from the high in early uh, mid-June uh, 2019, again from January 2020. So we're entering sort of a, uh, a resistance area that, uh, that, that seemed unrealistic not too long ago. So we'll have to see how things actually do there. Um, so, so maybe worth paying attention to. You know, looking at bond, bond prices continue to uh, fail. Friday really pushed us below that last Fibonacci support level. You know, if I'm a Fibonacci purist, what that tells me is we're aiming down to test the all-time, or not the all-time lows, Lord, the, the lows from the fourth quarter of 2019. That would put the TLT down around 132, which would be another, you know, 16 points below where we're at. Worth noting right here, you actually have potentially the makings of a bullish divergence with lower lows in the price higher lows in the RSI. So that's actually something to watch on the chart of the TLT uh, and see if that, uh, if that materializes. 10-year yields, as you can imagine, the inverse of that TLT chart continuing to go higher. We'll finish off just looking at uh, Bitcoin, maybe one other chart if we have time for it. But you know, we've looked at this chart in this form since we pulled back here. And if you look at the September low, if you look at the January high in Bitcoin, we've pulled back it's around 30,000, 29,000. That's the 38.2% retracement of that upswing. We found support there a number of times, bounced off the 50-day. When we bounce off of there, the assumption is we return to uh, the previous highs. We've done it. If you take that height and start to project higher than that, you get to some pretty outrageous numbers very, very quickly. A quick measurement uh, that I was doing looking at 
um, this uh, this move taking the low to the high. And if that's 100%, doing like 161.8%, that would put us in the 67,000-ish range. Uh, I'll have to look at that again, and I'll update you when I, when I do it. I think that was about right. So just like before, I, I made a comment about uh, 37,000 when we were back at 20. That seemed crazy. Uh, I guess that would be the next objective higher if we would continue to move it. But first step at a time, right? It's all about we move next low. Do we make a higher low? That's what you look for on something like that, a long-term chart, uh, and see if the uptrend is able to uh, continue to materialize. So overall, I mean, certainly looking at the big picture, you're getting this sense of, uh, of risk on versus risk off. The only thing, other thing I would say is the dollar. So the dollar has been weakening for uh, much of, uh, of 2021, pretty much since the uh, the end of last year, down a little bit on Friday and down again today, just a little bit, not too much. Um, so I think seeing a potential downside or reversal, if that downtrend in the dollar continues and we roll over and get a new leg down and retest those lows, that would be back toward the, the, the trend that we've seen through much of uh, 2020. So far, 2021 has been a little different with a stronger dollar. And again, that persisting, I think, continues to make that uh, maybe a, a, an environment that most are not prepared for worth thinking about how that might impact things like non-US stocks, small versus large and, uh, and other things. That's our market recap for today. And again, a lot of movements and, and generally speaking, it's risk on over risk off it, by most measures I would use to make that determination. Our next segment is called sector setups this is where we focus on the 11 S&P sectors and, and see what we can determine. So overall, this is the weekly RRG. This is what we usually use to, to start a conversation. If you're not familiar with this, as a reminder, uh, Julius DeCumpeter was on the show uh, last week, did a great job um, talking about the uh, these rotations. I'd encourage you to check out his show, Sector Spotlight, where he breaks this down in a lot more detail than we have time for on, uh, on this show. Generally speaking, the most constructive pattern I would point out would be technology on this longer term time frame, and, and I would say that because energy and financials are the strongest, and that's because they're furthest to the right. And overall, you have to acknowledge that they have been the relative strength over the longer term. Materials and industrials have certainly been weakening. They were the strongest and now have been rotating further and further southwest. What is starting to take up and, and overcompensate for that or, or come in where those are weakening is technology. You can see out of this cluster of communication services, consumer discretionary uh, technology, you can see that that's uh, tech, the XLK is the one that's uh, the only one of the three that is back in the leading quadrant. It's worth noting though, that all three of these now are aiming uh, Northeast. This is the XLY consumer discretionary starting to, or continuing to improve now heading Northeast, very close to going in the leading quadrant. Communication services has actually made a big left turn and is heading Northeast as well. So all three of these actually heading in uh, the direction of improvement, I guess, I would call that. In the short term, you've got a little bit more of a, uh, of a mean reversion happening. You can see the XLRE and the XLC real estate and communication services that have been um, sort of the, uh, the strongest furthest to the right. This is the XLK technology also further to the right. In terms of what's improving on this short term or this tactical time frame, it's things like financials, industrials, uh, consumer staples. And consumer staples are an interesting one. When I see that one start to improve, I'm, I'm interested only because I know it's not on a lot of people's radar. You think of this as defense, and it makes me think opportunistically, are there charts that could be compelling within there um, that, uh, that we've not paid attention to? We're going to, a little later in our shifting stocks, I mean, we're going to hit on the strongest ranked stock in each of the 11 sectors. We'll see what came up on the XLP uh, for consumer staples and see if it's worth taking a, uh, another look at. Let's continue on and look at the uh, candle glance page. This is where we look at all 11 S&P sectors and then the S&P. And I think of this as uh, sort of uh, printing out a bunch of charts, throwing them on a table and, and seeing what looks like what. It's a great way to just identify relationships and, and, and focus on, on the key moves. So on this view, look at what is above both moving averages, right? Out of all of these sectors, which ones are in a constructive pattern above two upward sloping moving averages? The reality is it's actually most of them and, and maybe process elimination, what's actually not above two upward sloping moving averages. The XLP, because it's not quite above its 50 day and the 50 day is actually sloping down a little bit. Utilities actually just got back above there last week. Uh, healthcare is, that actually might be the only one at this point that is not above two upward sloping moving average. That looks to be the case. So overall, 10 of the 11 sectors above, uh, oh, sorry, utilities, the 50 day is still sloping down. So nine out of 11 above 
two upward sloping moving averages, that's pretty strong. What are the sectors that are making new highs in the last week? It's technology, it's consumer discretionary, it's communication services, those sectors that were sort of on the right side of the, uh, of the weekly RRG and rotating all Northeast, those are the ones uh, making new highs. So, you know, looking at the XOK, okay, we've talked about the relative strength in technology. We've talked about how that tapered off a bit at the end of last year, but you can see that it's starting to uh, improve a little bit. It came off in the first week of January, but from there, it's sort of turning higher. And now going into February, you're making new price highs. Relative strength holding in, we'd see if the if the relative strength continues to push higher. But overall, I think that sector's, you know, it's been strength on an absolute basis, certainly continues to uh, to be in that place. Consumer discretionary has just been a nice, consistent uptrend. You can see the overall trend of this is positive. Every high, every low, for the most part, going higher. And that's the pattern. As long as that pattern continues, it's hard to bet against something like that. When that pattern changes, that's when you have to start to be a little more skeptical. Worth noting, energy, um, this is one that we'd, uh, we've talked about previously, sort of fell off a, a lot of radars, or, or not fell off the radar. I think we've been paying attention to what certainly felt like other sectors were doing better. And I'm just going to update the annotation here really quick. This is the Fibonacci retracement that we ran back here from the June high. So if you look, the June peak lines up pretty well with the XLE with the July, with the January uh, peak from there. We're now right rotating right back up there. So we're almost making this sort of cup and handle like pattern. We break above that, which would be above 45, uh, you know, we'll, see, we'll call it $45, which would get us above that June high, above that January high. But that'd be a nice, pretty impressive breakout. And you can see how the relative strength overall has been trending pretty good coming, uh, you know, after the first week in November, this was that, you know, made a new swing low and it felt like energy was going to go retest the March lows from there, started gapping higher. And, you know, it's funny, if you look back here, you know, we have people asking, I remember, you know, we gapped and then we gapped again. It's like, did I miss the move in energy? And and hopefully what you what you can remember by looking at a chart like this is, is absolutely not. Just because something gaps out of lows, you know, there's always this sense that you might have missed out on the move. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, extended long-term uptrends begin as short-term, you know, a lot of times short-term explosions to the upside, call that a uh, sort of a breakaway gap, right? Sort of something uh, starting out, launching uh, out, of, uh, out of some swing lows and, uh, and going higher. And you can see that the trend has actually been fairly consistent of higher highs and higher lows, most recently off the 50-day moving average. Now testing a new swing high, that gets above there. I think you have to uh, pay attention to that sort of trend and, and certainly follow it if, uh, if at all possible. Last one we'll look at uh, healthcare. So healthcare has been an, an interesting one. What, you know, great price trend, but the chart of healthcare is what reminds me to always look at the relative strength. So, you know, overall is the trend okay? Yes, the trend is absolutely okay. You're seeing higher highs and higher lows, but this is the real problem. Look at the relative strength on the XOV. So from mid April of last year, you have not been paid uh, to own healthcare. And even with the strength recently, even with it breaking to new highs, uh, in the in the new year, you saw a bounce in the relative strength, but now it's rotated back lower as things like tech and communication services and consumer are breaking to new highs. Healthcare sort of uh, uh, tapered off a little bit. So again, follow the relative line. If nothing else, focus on the message of the relative line. That'll help you lean into what's working and what is not working. The RRG relative rotation graph, another way to just focus on what's working relative to uh, the other 10 sectors. We need to take a quick commercial break back with our next segment, Shifting Stocks. We'll see you in a minute. Hey there, welcome back to the final bar. This is Dave Keller here at stockcharts.com. Appreciate so much you joining us uh, here every weekday after the close for our show as we debrief on the action of the day using charts. As a reminder, we love to hear from you. We'll do another mailbag segment on Tuesday's show and we'd love to answer one of your questions on the air. You can get your questions to us three ways. First is via email, the final bar at stockcharts.com. Second is on Twitter at final bar SCTV. Third, on our YouTube channel, just put a comment right below the video. Let us know what you're looking at, what you're running into, what tickers, what charts you'd like us to focus on, and we'll do our best to uh, address those, uh, those uh, questions in, the, um, in our next mailbag segment on Tuesday. 
Our next segment is called Shifting Stocks. So on, as I mentioned earlier on Mondays, we do the macro uh, overview, sort of focusing on the big picture top-down analysis. We then look at sectors. And again, we've, you know, if, you, if you look at what we, what we saw previously, it's sort of the risk on uh, maneuver. You've got some of these um, you know, long-term uptrends that are con- continuing to persist. You have things like energy sort of reemerging and starting to outperform uh, test price resistance as well. Now let's look at individual stocks. I do different things with this segment depending on sort of what came out of my normal uh, routine. Uh, one of the things I just wanted to do today is focus on the top ranked scooter, the top scooter ranked stock in each one of the 11 S&P sectors. And if you're not familiar, um, every chart, uh, you know, most stocks that we, uh, that we track on stock charts as well as ETFs, industry groups and, uh, and elsewhere, uh, we have what's called a scooter ranking, a stock charts technical ranking. And this is a percentile ranking based on trend and it has a long-term, medium-term and short-term component. It is more skewed on the long-term side, which means something that's had a, a nice long-term run has pulled back a little bit, most likely will still score pretty well on the scooter ranking, uh, barring a huge sell-off because it's still, again, it's measured on the long-term trend. So a long-term outperformer, a long-term uptrend is certainly going to score very well. We'll start with Tesla because I'll just do it alphabetically, starting with consumer discretionary. Uh, This is our uh, very close to number one ranked stock. It's not quite there um, uh, at the moment, but when you look at uh, Tesla in the large cap universe, it's second to uh, to NIO, which is one of the um, uh, more recent names that have emerged and gotten a lot of uh, a lot of social media attention. You know, overall, when I look at the chart of Tesla, until proven otherwise, you have to assume that the trend is higher. Now, this is deceiving because these are big percent moves. If you look at where the stock is trading, you know, and retesting the 200 day would almost you know would over half the stock. I mean, it'd be a pretty big sell off to pull back. So these are big percentage moves that we're dealing with. What concerns me, if anything, about the chart of Tesla is the bearish divergence. We have higher highs in price, lower peaks in RSI. You're seeing that on a couple names that have gotten up to this point. The relative strength has tapered off, but overall still handily outperforming any benchmark you could come up with over the last uh, 12 months for sure, even the last two months. So overall, I mean, a chart like this, I, you have to assume as a trend follower, you have to assume that that's in, uh, in pretty good shape until we break down through support. Now, most recently, you actually made a new swing low. We've, uh, we've actually made a potential lower high here. So seeing if Tesla can overcome 900, which would get above uh, the, uh, the swing highs from, uh, from earlier, uh, from last month in January, I think would be pretty good to validate this uptrend and invalidate this bearish divergence that we've had. But if we fail here around 900, might uh, might give you a sense that there's more of a ceiling there, more of a resistance than uh, we might be prepared for. So something to watch there. When you look at consumer staples, I mentioned earlier, um, the top ranked stock uh, in this one is Estee Lauder. Now it's still, again, nowhere near the top of the list. Now the, out of the entire large cap universe, um, this is still 78th percentile. So not bad, but certainly not one of the better, uh, what are the better trends there? What's interesting about EL is if you see higher highs, you can see this uptrend and most recently end of January, you actually undercut the November low, which started to feel really concerning. It felt like this could, you know, really uh, go more deeply, maybe retest the June low or something, or at least get down to the 200 day moving average. Since then though, a nice bounce, it just closed above the 50 day last Thursday and then gapping higher on Friday, following through to the upside today. So making a new 12 month relative high, which is certainly impressive after the run over the last two trading sessions, making a, a break above the December peak, which is uh, which is also very good. So holding that sort of that 265, 260, 270 level uh, on any pullback would be pretty important to just uh, make sure that it's uh, it's keeping that uh, that pattern of, of moving higher. Also worth noting that it's just hitting that overbought level, which isn't the end of the world. It's just something to pay attention to. We're going to have to go quickly through uh, the remaining nine here. Uh, within energy, a lot of the energy stocks, as I mentioned, emerging, the top ranked stock is actually a fairly constructed pattern. It's not something just breaking out. This is something that looks more like a technology name, like a nice consistent uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. This is Diamondback Energy, uh, ticker FANG. And you can see the uh, price has gone higher, nowhere near the 50-day moving average, not quite overbought yet. The relative strength over the last uh, two, two to three months really impressive on uh, on Fang. In financials, it's not a name that you're probably familiar with, maybe because uh, it's not uh, one of the more, uh, you know, it's not one of the larger banks, but it's uh, SVB, ticker SIVB. And what what's impressive with this chart, just the percent run, you can see that the relative strength line has been going up. It's been outperforming the S&P handily for the last four to five months, really accelerated uh, in October and has not looked back. And you can see this beautiful, steady uptrend, higher highs, 
higher lows, making a new 52-week closing high again today, getting above 500 uh, for the first time. Within healthcare, the number one stock is a line, ALGN. Not bad, and the big, the big move here was the gap that you had in October. You saw how that generated plenty of outperformance, but since then, it's actually done pretty well. Most impressive here recently is the pullback to the 50-day end of January that's gone higher. We gapped up. This could be a bit of an island reversal. I have to see how this uh, does, but it's sort of the move higher and then today coming off a little bit, we gapped down uh, later in this week. That would be a, a bit of a negative short-term pattern, but overall the positive trend over the long-term certainly in place. Deer is the number one industrial stock. Uh, nice, consistent uptrend. It looks like the chart of SIVB that we looked at a few moments ago. Just a consistent pattern, higher highs, higher lows. If you had a portfolio that looked like this, I'd feel, I'd feel pretty confident about your overall positioning just in terms of the, uh, the trends. The number one ranked material stock is not you know, it's, a, it's not a bad chart. Don't get me wrong. None of these are bad charts by the fact that they're the top ranked stock in each sector. But this one maybe uh, is, uh, is one to be concerned about only because we're approaching significant resistance. Through early January, we rallied up to around 32 or so and then hit that three different times, unable to get above it, pulled back to the 50 day, very similar to the low we had from December. Now back to those previous highs. We can get above 32 up to 33. That would be a nice rotation higher on FCX. Overall, the long-term trend has been fairly constructive. This has come up with a number of my guests over the last month or so, and, and I can't argue with the relative performance. I think getting to new swing highs and a new relative high would, uh, would certainly fuel the, uh, the bullish uh, scenario there. Three more sectors very quickly to go. SPG is Simon Property Group. This is the top ranked REIT, 86 percentile. And if you're not looking at REITs too much, I would be focusing on charts like this that are nice, consistent uptrends. Look at the peak from June actually lines up pretty well with the low we had here and a rotation higher. The yield on a lot of these REITs, pretty good, almost a 6% yield on SPG. And that's after rising in price uh, pretty, uh, pretty well. Within, uh, what is it, ENPH is uh, N phase. This is within technology. This is within in that renewable energy group that has the solar stocks and other things like that. Similar to the chart of, uh, of Deer, sort of testing that previous high, get above 220. That would be really interesting. What's interesting about N phase, nowhere near overbought. So that was an RSI just above 50. So it's actually in pretty good shape as a long term trend. And the number one ranked utility, AES. I would encourage you, one of the great exercises, great reasons to go through this, especially in sectors like REITs utilities, consumer staples, there are good charts in all of the 11 sectors. And hopefully that's what that shows you. It's all about screening. It's all about identifying the patterns. Worry less about what sector they're in. Worry more about the patterns themselves and the trends. And hopefully what you can see is each of the 11 sectors has at least one name in pretty good shape within the S&P 500. We need to wrap the show, go to the three and three, three charts, three minutes. Here we go. Chart number one is the S&P breadth by cap tiers. This is not updated yet for today, but certainly, uh, you know, given what we've seen, these trend lines are going to continue higher. These, these advanced decline lines are going to continue to go higher. On Friday, I upgraded all of these back to green, indicating overall bullish uh, positioning. So this is the cumulative advanced decline line for the NYSE for large caps, mid caps, and small caps. All four of them have now once again made a new swing high, gotten above their January peak, making new 52-week highs. As long as that trend continues, Long and strong, trend is your friend, we're going higher. The XLE is our chart number two. This is the energy sector, sort of a cup and handle-like pattern here. It's not the traditional rounded bottom you might like from there, but I like the resistance line or the, the uh, resistance level from, Jan, uh, from June of last year, excuse me, testing that again in January, just a couple of weeks ago. And now we have this shallower correction to the 50-day and once again, retesting that. We get about 45 on the XLE. That has the potential to go a lot further, at the very least to retest um, the uh, the highs from 2019, which was really that plateau we were at for uh, for about a year before falling off the cliff in the uh, in the first quarter of 2020. So impressive to see energy finally make its way back up back up there, and the relative strength is what really impresses me on that chart. Finally, I think there are good charts uh, all around there. And when I'm looking bottom up and just focusing on stocks and focusing on individual charts, I see a lot of charts that just feel very constructive. And again, that could all change tomorrow. The market could start rotating lower. And a lot of these trends would no longer look as positive as they do. But when I'm looking today and I'm thinking of uh, opportunistic uh, charts, I'm not, I'm not struggling to find them. And it's not just large cap, it's mid cap and small cap as well. I'm highlighting uh, Kohl's today, KSS. This is a uh, resistance level in December. I'm highlighting in red. We sort of traded around there end of December, broke above there, retested that, uh, that range a couple times, once again, making a new 52-week high. This trend line using the, uh, the recent lows 
I think is a good one to follow an impressive relative strength. So that is our show for today. Thanks so much for joining us every weekday after the close for the final bar. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a good night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.